Anyway, uh, please join me in welcoming Miklos Rede. Who that's is a, me. Yes, that's you. <laughs> who's a professor of logic, philosophy of science, and scientific method. Is it's the name of the department, but I'm just a professor of philosophy. It doesn't okay, really so matter. That much. Professor of philosophy in the department of logic, philosophical method. Department of philosophy, logic, and scientific method. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's always a bit of a mouthful. At the London yes. School of Economics, where he has been since 2007, uh, 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 before Miklos studied originally physics and then also philosophy at Utrecht University in Budapest, uh, where he also got his PhD at the Habilitation afterwards, and uh, an assistant professorship and then associate professorship before he moved to to England. Yes. Uh, Miklos works in the philosophical foundations of contemporary modern uh, physical theories, mostly quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, quantum logic, uh, and the philosophical foundations of probability theory. He has a book published with uh, Gabor Hofer Sabo and uh, Laszlo Sabo on the principle of the common cause with Rantlach, I believe. Cambridge. Or, sorry, Cambridge, uh, University Press. And uh, an old book, which is a classic on quantum logic mm -hmm. and uh, the algebraic approach or something with... Algebraic think, approach to quantum logic. Uh, algebra algebraic approach to quantum logic with uh, Kluver. 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 Kluver uh, Press and uh, several collections, I think, of papers on and by uh, John von Neumann, uh, uh, on which he's also published. Uh, so with that, uh, please join me in welcoming Miklos, who will be talking today about the category of local quantum physics. Please, Miklos. Well, thank you very much. This is a far too rich introduction. I did not expect that rich of an introduction. Um, and I would like to point out that currently I'm in the Munich Center for Mathematical Philosophy, happily on sabbatical for a whole, for a whole year, and I'm supported by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. And this talk is based on joint work with a young, brilliant uh, mathematician, mathematical logician, Zalan Janisch is his name. He's in the Yaga Leonian University, Krakow, and he is in the logic department. And this joint work was published in the Communications in Mathematical Physics in 2018. I'm going to give you the reference at the end. And the work is very technical, unfortunately. But I'm going to suppress here essentially all the technicalities uh, to the extent I'm capable of doing so. And I will concentrate on the main conceptual philosophical points. And uh, and to do this, in the very beginning, I'm also formulating what I take to be the main message of this talk. It's on the next slide, but I'm going to be sitting down because it's easier to navigate the slides. And also, I'd like to face the audience. That's my, my preference. So I see when you're happy, I see when you're very desperate when you are and, and unhappy. Also, I understand some of you have to leave uh, before this whole thing ends. Just feel free to leave any time, uh, any of you, by the way. So what's the main message? This, uh, this main message consists of four parts. And the, this, the framework, the general topic which this talk and which this paper is about is the problem of how to express relativistic locality, not just uh, in general in quantum theory, but in connection with a particular approach to quantum field theory, which is the categorical quantum field theory, also called categorical local quantum physics. And the first part of the message that is that this approach is the very natural and powerful generalization of a specific approach to quantum field theory, which is the haag kostler axiomatization of quantum field theory. And this generalization generalizes those, that axiom system to non-flat spacetimes. That's the novelty of this approach. And it is a central issue in connection with this axiomatization how to express physical locality. 
And what I'm going to talk about is an idea as to how to express physical locality in this categorical approach. And I claim here two things. One is that there is a very natural notion of categorical subsystem independence or subobject independence, which one can formulate in general terms of category theory. And this notion of independence, categorical subobject independence, might be interesting in its own right. I'm going to tell you why I think so. And the second part of the main message is that this general notion can be specified in category of quantum field theory by taking a specific category which is relevant for this category approach, namely the category of C star algebras with the operations as morphism. And if you specify this general subobject independence in terms of this category, then you end up having an expression of locality which is an axiom or can be taken as an axiom and this is the right axiom, this is what I claim, in terms of which relativistic locality can be formulated. So this is the non-technically formulated message, I hope it's clear enough. And what I'm going to do is I talk a little bit about this category of formulation of quantum field theory which was initiated by Brunetti, Friedenhagen and Birch in 2003. And then I will define this subobject independence in general categorical term as morphism co-possibility. I tell you what this is. And then I specify this notion in terms of a specific category, which is the category of C star algebras with operations as morphisms. And I will argue why the axiom which I suppose, which I propose, is the right one to express independence in this category or approach to field theory, this is the right expression of relativistic locality. Okay, so what is, what is the motivation for this categorical approach? A couple of words about this category of quantum field theory. I'm quoting here from the paper which was published in Communications in Mathematical Physics in 2003 by these three authors, and they write the following. <coughs> Quantum field theory incorporates two main principles into quantum physics, locality and covariance. Locality expresses the idea that quantum processes can be localized in space and time and at the level, obser of, at the level observable quantities that usually separated processes are exempt from any uncertainty relations restricting their commensurability. The principle of covariance within special relativity states that there are no preferred Lorentzian coordinates for the description of physical processes, and thereby the concept of an absolute space as an arena for physical phenomena is abandoned. Yet it is meaningful to speak of events in terms of space-time points as entities of a given fixed space-time background in the setting of special relativistic physics. In general relativity, however, space-time points lose this a priori meaning. The principle of general covariance forces one to regard space-time points simultaneously as members of several locally diffeomorphic space-times. It is rather the relations between distinguished events that have physical interpretation. This principle should also be observed when quantum field theories in presence of gravitational fields is discussed. This is the main motivation. And their conclusion that quantum field theory is a covariant functor in the fundamental and physical sense of implementing the principles of locality and general covariance. I think in this circle of experts, I don't have to say anything more. It should be clear what the motivation then is. Minkowski's space-time is just too specific. You have to formulate quantum field theory on a non-flat space-time, somehow implementing the idea of general covariance. And this is what happens in this categorical approach, where quantum field is regarded as a functor, a covariant functor. And I have now to tell you what the categories are between which this functor operates, and this is what I'm going to do. So this idea is that one considers two categories, the category of space-times, with certain morphisms, isometric smooth causal embeddings of space-times. I'm going to say a bit more about this. 
And another category, the category of C-star algebras, with injective C-star algebra homomorphisms as morphisms. And the idea is that the functor associates with every space-time in this category an algebra which should be interpreted physically as the algebra of observables, observables that is in that particular space-time, and this association is done in a covariant manner. That's the, that's the main idea, and I'd like to be a little bit more specific about how this is done. Namely, it's not just any space-time which is allowed in this approach. They have to be somehow physically reasonable space-times, and I'm going to tell you what the restrictions are which Brunetti, Friedenhagen, and Versch impose on the space-times, and also say uh, a bit more specifically what these causal embeddings, the isomatic smooth causal embeddings are, because that the causality is a non-trivial requirement and it might be relevant for what is coming later. So the objects in this category of uh, space-times are four-dimensional uh, differentiable manifolds with a Lorentzian metric, which are also assumed to be time-oriented and globally hyperbolic. These are physically, 